Last night, we got the news that Ron Franklin has passed away. First place I saw it on Twitter was from uh, Mike Barnes, who was a friend of Ron Franklin's in Austin, Texas. He tweeted, just got the sad news that my friend Ron Franklin has passed away. If you're a sports fan, you knew Ron Franklin and his amazing voice, incredibly talented and knowledgeable and very nice and gracious. Rest in peace. He was 79 years old, got his start in broadcasting during his time as a student at Ole Miss. He eventually became the play-by-play announcer of the Houston Oilers, went on to do radio play-by-play for football and basketball at the University of Texas, but is most known for his time as the voice of Saturday Night College Football on ESPN. And so, as a tribute, and we'll talk more about this in the next segment, but as a tribute to the now late Ron Franklin, I would like to take you back to some of his greatest moments behind the microphone on Saturday nights, primarily in the SEC. For the Tennessee Volunteers, the 2000 season has been a year of close calls and near misses. Not since 1988 has the Big Orange stared down the possibility of going 0-3 in the SEC. For Quincy Carter and the Georgia Bulldogs, 1988 rings true for a different reason. It marks the last time the men of red and black defeated the balls. Nine consecutive losses have dogged Georgia since. Two teams looking to reverse the trend. One looking to put 88 behind of the other trying to recapture its past glory. against Tennessee, Florida, and Georgia Tech, against everybody else, 20 and 2. Hi, once again, everybody. Ron Franklin with my partner, Mike Gottfried. We are set for a raucous scene here tonight. The volunteers and the Razorbacks back up to the booth. And Ron Franklin. Ron. Okay, Chris, thanks so much. Great job as usual. And uh, this is fun, fellas. Uh, you look around and the series history in this. The people are surprised when they see that Tennessee and Arkansas have not uh, hooked up that many times. 12-2, and two, Tennessee leads it. But I'll tell you, the recent games in this series have been so doggone tight. I mean, it's just been overtime and one-point games all over. And Arkansas has 6-1 uh, and one all time in overtime games. Of course, Dr. Punch told us in 2002, the last time, six overtimes. They play two games of seven, so if this goes to extra stances tonight, uh, Arkansas is used to that type of ball game. <laughs> Mavra prepares to kick it off for the Razorbacks. And this one is underway. And it is returnable at the one-yard line. And this is Williams. Fumble the ball. Now picks it up. Everybody relaxed for a second. And they will have very poor field position at the 12-yard line. There are few scenes quite like it anywhere in college football. will face their toughest test of the season as the second-ranked Florida Gators come calling tonight here at Jordan-Hare Stadium. Two games in a row that Murphy has had to start. Grossman on second down. Delivers over the middle. Got him wide open. And that is Taylor Jacobs. And he will go inside the 30-yard line at the initial first down of the night for the Florida Gators. They fear a little bit is the wind. Chandler with that attempt of 45 yards. Wind at his back. So he's got plenty of distance, and he's got plenty of accuracy. Florida goes on the scoreboard first. So we'll take a timeout with the 11-24 left in this opening quarter, and it's the Gators three, and the Tigers nothing. Petrovic with the kickoff. This one much longer. Coming down to Campbell at the goal line. Carter, I beg your pardon. Carter. Carter's the man who broke the long run against LSU here last year, and he's going to take it all the way down to the 32-yard line of Florida. Blacksburg, Virginia. 
Folks, we go to noisy stadiums all around the country. I'm not sure we have ever been in a scene where fans are any more pumped than they are right here tonight. Waiting right now for the Hokies to take the field. They are jumping, they are screaming, and it's been this way for the last 30 minutes. Frank Beamer waits in the tunnel. This is the date that they have pinpointed on the can calendar for a very, very long time. to the Chick-fil-A Bowl. Tonight at the Georgia Dome in Atlanta, we have South Carolina from the SEC versus Florida State from the ACC. Hi, everybody. Ron Franklin and Happy New Year. Great matchup because of the coaches. The old ball coach, Steve Spurrier, a master when it comes to offense. And across the field from him tonight, a first-year head coach in Jimbo Fisher, who has a sizable background in offense as well. He not only won nine games this year, he was the offensive genius for LSU when they won a national championship under Nick Saban. So, as big ball games go, it's not his first rodeo. From the Bayou to the Plains, the LSU-Auburn matchup has moved the earth and raised fire to the sky. The Bayou Bengals come touting a new coach in Nick Saban. The hope restore the roar of a once proud program. LSU must figure out a way to stop the Auburn running game. Rudy Johnson has the Auburn faithful believing and reminiscing of Auburn ball carriers past. taking the field here before a jam-packed house of over 85,000 at Jordan-Hare Stadium. They are prepared to see their Tigers go 3-0. But on the other side of the field as they face off tonight against the LSU Tigers with their new head coach, Nick Saban, they too trying to go 3-0 on this young 2000 season. Two proud programs trying to right themselves. So a little bit of a, uh, a trip down memory lane with uh, the late Ron Franklin, who passed away yesterday at the age of 79. Borky and I were talking about this earlier, and, and Michael, you probably have some memories of Ron Franklin, but for the folks that kind of had their growing up time through the 90s and into the early 2000s, that may be the voice that is part of the reason that you're a college football fan. Um, the, the thing that stood out to me the most about Ron Franklin was his ability to set the scene to begin a game. And that's the majority of what I had in there. You heard some, some calls and some of his play-by-play, which was never overstated. It was never over the top. It was never too much. But when you heard his voice on a Saturday night, from Baton Rouge or Athens or Knoxville or Oxford or Starkville or Fayetteville or wherever it was, it felt big. 